It's the first Monday in October, and you know what that means. The U.S. Supreme Court is back at work. The court has a docket full of controversial cases on topics ranging from obscenity to strip searches to warrantless surveillance. Then there are the cases that haven't officially reached the court yet, including a challenge to the constitutionality of the federal health care law. Joining us to preview the term, NewsHour regular Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal and Tom Goldstein, founder of the website SCOTUSblog.com. Let's first talk, Marsha, about the big case, the big elephant in the room that's not actually on the docket, right. and that's the health care law. How, right. many, how many states have brought this challenge to the court? Well, uh, I would say a total of 27 now. 26 states filed one lawsuit. Virginia filed its own lawsuit. Uh, there are many lawsuits around the country, but right now uh, the Supreme Court has uh, I think uh, f maybe five petitions. Does that sound about right, Tom? Five petitions asking the court to get involved. And the uh, Obama administration now has also asked the Supreme Court to review the legal questions. It's probably the only thing that all the parties agree on at this point is that the Supreme Court should get involved. So when the, both sides agree that the Supreme Court should get involved sooner rather than later, does that make it more likely to happen, Tom? It does make it more likely, and here it's all but certain. A federal law was struck down as unconstitutional. The federal courts of appeals disagree. It is absolutely on the fast track. What other things are on, not quite on the docket yet, but everybody's waiting for them to arrive? Well, the, the main event comes after health care gets granted. We have Arizona's very famous immigration law and the question of the state's role in enforcing uh, immigration policy. We have a critical case about affirmative action in higher education. This case is really important because it might be another place where the Roberts Court takes a step to the right and back from earlier decisions giving University some room. University of Texas, exactly right? Exactly right. Uh, and their program where about 20 percent of the students have race uh, uh, as part of the consideration. Uh, there's a major religion case that is coming up that will tell us a little bit more about the role that the government can have. This is where the state of Utah is involved in a program of putting crosses by the side of a highway where uh, officers die. There are a number of really hot button social issues that are waiting in the wings. And these are waiting in the wings means it may not necessarily get argued this year, but if the court takes it up, it's significant in and of itself. Uh, that's true, Gwen. I mean, the uh, affirmative action case, it, there's a petition that's already been filed. So we'll, we will know this term probably if the court's going to take it or not. And the Arizona immigration case, uh, the governor of Arizona has already filed a petition with the court, and we may well know this term yet if uh, the court will take it. Okay, Tom, let's talk about some of the things actually on the docket. One of them is a case involving strip clubs, strip searches, not strip clubs, strip searches for people who have been, for this individual who was uh, arrested on a minor offense. Uh, you're involved in this case. Actually. Right. I, so I'm biased a little bit. I represent the defendant, but there's a, a battle of two important considerations here. These are people who've been arrested for minor offenses. There's no real reason to believe they're particularly carrying contraband, but they're strip searched. On the other hand, the jails have a serious concern about smuggling into the facility, and the Supreme Court's going to have to deal with that tug of war. Now, in my defense, I said strip clubs because I was thinking about the nudity case, which is also before yes, the, the yes. court, right? Uh, compliments of Fox Television and ABC. Uh, the court is going to take a look at the uh, Federal Communications Commission's regulations uh, that uh, govern fleeting expletives and nudity. It involves uh, Cher and Nicole Ritchie, who during an awards, two separate awards shows used expletives, and also a segment of the now defunct NYPD blues in which a woman's naked buttocks was was shown. Haven't we had argued this before? This case was before the Supreme Court uh, on uh, the fleeting expletives issue, but it did not deal directly with whether the regulations violated the First Amendment. Okay, there's another case which is coming, which also feels like it's, it's taken from the entertainment world, and this is about GPS searches. There was a movie called Enemy of the State, where you could follow a guy around based on something you attached to his car. Turns out, now in this age of GPS, this is a real issue. That's right. It's happening today. The Supreme Court's going to have to decide if the police want to attach a GPS tracker to your car, do they have to go get a judge's permission in order to use that to know where you're driving around? And so that's important in its own right, but it also 
is another step forward in the courts trying to deal with new technologies and privacy and where to draw the line. It seems like we're hitting every possible hot button in this court. Eyewitness testimony, the reliability of eyewitness testimony, something which was a major question in this Troy Davis case we all lived through a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't think the court is going to get uh, it, uh, right on point in terms of the reliability of eyewitness testimony. This comes up in a different sort of fact pattern involving uh, circumstances in which uh, the police may have suggested that a certain person uh, committed the crime, suggested it to the, eye, the person who's an eyewitness. But it is the first time in many, many years that, that the court is taking a look at how eyewitness testimony uh, is viewed. And, of course, there is not a, a very amazing court session without religion involved in this. In this case, there's a case about whether a religious school can, what, fire somebody who doesn't share the religion? That's right. The question is whether religious organizations might be a school, might be a church, some other, something affiliated with a religion, the extent to which they're subject to the federal civil rights laws, the laws that say you won't discriminate on the base of race, gender, or religion, or does the application of that law saying to this school in this instance, you can't fire someone or engage in retaliation against them, does that involve the government too much in religion? Where do you draw the line where it's actually the government dictating to the religion what its own religious beliefs are? On the other hand, how do we protect people from discrimination when they work in those institutions? When we look at what the court, the court has decided to take and what they haven't yet decided to take, what does that tell us about this reordered court? We now have a fairly settled group of justices Justices. Nobody, we think, is resigning that there are no new justices, I think, for the first time since Justice Roberts took over. So what does that tell us? Anything? Well, I think uh, instead of looking for big themes right now, I, I think what we're seeing with this court is a continuation of interest in certain areas of the law. For example, the First Amendment. Uh, we've seen some really interesting cases that the court has handled, the violent video games, uh, the protests at military funerals, and now again we have a First Amendment case involving uh, the FCC and the fleeting expletives. Uh, a continuation of their interest in the Fourth Amendment, uh, as we see with the GPS case and the strip searches. Uh, one thing, Gwen, that we don't see yet on the docket is a big business case. Yeah. Last term there were several huge business cases. It's still early. The court can add cases to the docket generally up until about mid-January, uh, add it for arguments in the current term. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Is the lack of a business case mean that this is more likely to be kind of a political court? The health care case could come down in the middle of an election year. A lot of these other cases touch on political issues. That's what we're going to look back on this term as if they take not only health care, but immigration, if they get involved in affirmative action and religion, this is going to be remembered as an incredibly ideological term because inevitably those cases are going to be decided by very narrow margins between conservatives and liberals. Is it fair to say this is how the Roberts case will be defined a year like this? It, it might be. There was a similar year, 2006-07, when the court had race and abortion and uh, religion on the docket, and it was a very divisive term for the court. There were uh, a lot of uh, unhappy justice is that term. Okay, Marsha Coyle, Tom Goldstein, we'll be riding it through with both of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.